So the Eat Well Plate is a bit of a controversial topic in nutrition, especially in the level three nutrition, because here we're talking about what works as nutrition, but we also need to understand the guidelines so that we can pass our exam and also deliver safe information to our clients. So we kind of get this confusion point. So you may think that you eat perfectly healthy. You may have read lots of things about health. You might have done your own experiments on yourself and on clients and etc. etc. But depending on what you found, you may have some different ideas to what the guidelines state. Now that's where it gets a little bit uh, tricky and controversial. So this Eat Well plate here, you will be well familiar of by now, I'm sure. Now, just to highlight on these, look at the different components. The one that I really want to dial in on is the starchy foods here and the fruit and vegetables. Now, these two components obviously are both carbohydrates. So you've got starchy foods and you've got fruit and vegetables. Now, notice that they take up about 60% of that eat well plate, which might be different to what you feel should be included in a relation to carbohydrates. However, when it then gets to answering your exam, it's really, really important that in your exam you relate to the guidelines. It's asking you to answer it in relation to guidelines. So it might ask you which is important to base your foods around, for example. Now, based on how large proportion that is of carbohydrates, you personally might turn around and say, well, I don't think I should base a meal upon carbohydrates, but the guidelines do state that. So really it's about knowing that balance of what you do personally, what you personally believe, but also understanding the guidelines. And then when you read your exam, knowing that difference, what is it asking for? Is it asking for according to the Eat Well Plate, according to the Food Standards Agency? Then you need to recall that information, not your own opinion. And I know a few people that have got stuck on this before. And this relates to this next bit. So if you look on here now, you'll see that there is basically all of, uh, there's eight different recommendations basically. I'll read them out to you. Base your meals on starchy foods is number one. So this one comes up sometimes in the exam. That's a hush moment. That one comes up in the exam. So base your meals on starchy foods. Now you might disagree with that personally. You might say, well, in my opinion, I shouldn't be basing my my um, my meals on starchy foods but instead you might feel it's best to base it on something else however know that the eat well plate and the food standards agency are asking you to base meals based on starchy foods whether you agree with that or not now just to clarify the starchy foods uh, include breads grains pastas rices um, like we've got things like crackers and all sorts drawn on these little pictures here now just remember really my whole point of this video is that when you're coming to doing your exam it's asking you in relation to guidelines not your opinion or what you feel works for you personally so um yeah have a little look at the food standards agency recommendations you will need to know them for your exam and usually at least one of these comes up in your exam um usually there's one around starchy foods like i said base your meals on that there's usually one that involves about fruit and vegetables, so you need to have at least five portions per day. Then there is also about eating portions of fish, so making sure that you have at least two portions a week, one of which must be oily. And then the other recommendations that might come up include cutting down on saturated fats and sugar, trying to eat less salt and not going over six grams per day. So just remember it's six grams per day for salt. Get active and try a healthy weight, uh, try to be a healthy weight. That kind of goes without saying. Drink plenty of water and they say six to eight glasses per day, personally. I don't think that's anywhere near enough. And then also don't skip breakfast. So they're the Food Standards Agency eight topics or eight guidelines that you need to really be aware of ready for your nutrition exam. So I hope this kind of helps you. I hope it makes you feel a little bit more aware of what to expect. But really it comes down to reading that question. If it's asking for guidelines, that's what it's after, not after your opinion, unfortunately. So please make sure that you kind of consider that when you're in your exam. And the best of luck for your exam. Make sure you also check out a range of our videos that we've got going on on YouTube for all of our revision. I'm sure you'll find lots of helpful tips in there as well. 
If you're watching us on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe, and give us a little comment under there if there's any particular topics you want to know more about. Have a lovely day, and good luck with that nutrition exam. Bye.